In this tutorial, we're going to explore how to bring existing videos from other platforms into Panopto. Specifically, I will cover how to download VoiceThread videos that you may want to retain and transfer over to Panopto. We'll also look at how to do this with Zoom recordings and Blackboard Collaborate recordings. We're exploring this in particular as it pertains to the long-term retention policy. One thing I do want you to be aware of, and we'll um, address as we think about this, is be mindful of any type of FERPA issues that may arise from sharing um, names and faces of students. We really do want to be careful when we're bringing over content and be mindful that we are not exposing any students in our videos or any types of names that would indicate who a student is. With that in mind, uh, we're going to go ahead and we will begin with our first tutorial. The first portion of this tutorial, we are going to explore how to download a video that you may have created using the VoiceThread tool in the past and how to get that recording so that you can bring it into Panopto. To begin, we're going to look inside of Blackboard. We're going to start by going into our weekly content area. This is probably where you already have your pre-existing voice threads. In this example, I'll select on my week one. And you'll notice that I have an existing voice thread link placed in here. What we want to be able to do is to extract the video from this. So I will select on the voice thread link. And once voice thread opens, we'll be able to look at our video and make sure that this is the content that we would like to pull from voice thread. In your case, it's probably going to be either an introduction or maybe a presentation that you did. And now you'd like to move this into Panopto. So what we do is we navigate into the upper left-hand corner where you see the three lines. When we select this area, you'll notice that a menu appears. And in this menu, we want to go down towards the bottom where we see Export. By selecting export, we'll be able to export this video into a format that can then be shared and imported into Panopto. Notice that um, we will have an export button that we need to select here. And we will be told here specifically by the export that this can take anywhere from a few minutes up to an hour. And this all kind of depends on the size. Of the recording that you're working with. You will also notice that below there is a click here to check your progress. When I select that, I will see that I have the video. Um, I can see the size of this video. Notice that that's not the most normal video size in terms of dimensions here. And then um, below that we have a download link to this. You'll select your download link and if you don't want to wait for this, you can uh, also receive this via email that you have a video waiting. And then we'll look at this video format. So this is what I receive when it is exported. You'll notice that this has some information here from where this was created. You'll also notice that the dimensions for this, you'll see these black um, bars along the side. And this is just part of how VoiceThread particularly exports. You also notice that there is a VoiceThread logo at the end here. This leaves you opportunity to potentially remove this inside of Panopto so that you don't look like you just exported an existing video. And I just want you to be aware of that. Next, we're going to look at how we bring over our Zoom recordings. So we'll navigate into our Zoom LTI integration. Once the Zoom LTI integration opens up, we're going to see potential meetings. But what we want to do is navigate over to our cloud recordings. These are the recordings that are currently being stored inside of Zoom. You'll notice this first uh, menu only shows one meeting. This is like a most recent menu. If we navigate up to the left hand corner, we can access all meetings and recordings that are still stored in your system. And if we were to then go to cloud recordings, you'll notice that I have a much larger list of possible Zoom recordings. The other thing to keep in mind here is you'll notice that some of these recordings have two video files and some of them have as many as five. 
This pertains and was um, is dependent on if you have the Panopto LTI uh, integration that brings Zoom recordings automatically over into Panopto setup or not. For simplicity right now, we're going to demonstrate this with the basic two video files. If you'd like to learn more about how to set up Panopto so that Zoom recordings automatically transfer over, please look at some of our other training videos on this. Now that I have my video files, I'm going to go ahead and select the two video files. And I will show you that one of these is an audio only file. And the other one is the recording with the audio embedded. And this is the one that we're going to want. I made a quick demonstration video here uh, earlier today, just having a little bit of fun, just to prove that I was able to um, copy some video with some strange filters. So once I'm sure that I have the right video uh, selected, I'll choose the download button here. And then we will download this recording onto our computer's uh, downloads or onto our hard drive in an MP4 format. Once that download is completed, you'll notice that the file size um, listed in the title is a different set of dimensions. But notice there is, with Zoom, no Zoom branding or logo on the recording. So there's no need to trim uh, any of that off. That's a little bit different from VoiceThread. So I just want you to be aware of that. This demonstrates how we would extract the recording that is related to Zoom. Next, we're going to go ahead and look at how to get a Collaborate Ultra video. To obtain your Collaborate Ultra video, you're going to want to navigate into your Collaborate Ultra tab. And remember, this is only if you're an instructor that is using Collaborate Ultra that you would have this. Once we select this, you're going to navigate that top area that says Sessions. And you're going to look for the three bars on the left hand side that say menu. By selecting this, we will access a hidden menu essentially that should have a recordings tab and we'll select the recordings. This would be where our existing recordings would be hosted or housed. I do want you to keep in mind that um, if you've made a lot of recordings, you may want to change the date range on this. Sometimes uh, instructors say that they cannot see all of the recordings, and that's because sometimes they don't have a large enough date range on this. Be mindful if you think you're missing something to change this date range like I'm demonstrating here. For our example, we're going to select one of these recordings and we just want to show how to download it. So what we do is we navigate over to the right hand side where you see the recording options. This is the circle with the three dots. Once we select this, we navigate down to the area that says download. This is going to perform a similar task as to zoom. Notice in my lower left hand corner that the video has downloaded as an MP4 recording and we will open this for viewing and we can see what we actually um, have when we work with this. This is just a basic whiteboard video. There's no audio or anything to this. I just made this for example. But you can see uh, that this also is not branded with any type of blackboard branding on it at the beginning of the export or the end of the export. So it works very much like Zoom and very differently from VoiceThread. So this is how you get the um, recording moved from the cloud, Blackboard cloud, if you will, into your desktop computer. Next, what we want to do is look at how to actually bring any of these downloaded videos into Panopto. I'm going to assume that you've already um, looked at our videos on how to add the Panopto course application tool. We'll begin by selecting this. Um, you may be prompted to sign in. That's perfectly normal. Once we're signed in, we want to double check the folder that we are going to bring or import these videos into. So again, if you're not familiar with how to do this, you definitely want to go review some of the other Panopto training videos. We go to create and select upload media. From here, it's a fairly straightforward process. We select on the box here and we will be prompted 
to choose a video file. Once we choose the video file, at that point, it will go through an uploading process. Now you can see that the video file has uploaded and it's going through a processing phase. During this part, you are safe technically to close this pop-up window. This is where Panopto is um, making a version that will work in their player. We need to wait for this processing to complete before we can do any type of editing. So once uh, this goes to published, we'll be safe to open the editor on this. And we'll see this here momentarily. So why would I want to go ahead and make any edits? Well, in the case of the VoiceThread video, remember we had a beginning and an end that had VoiceThread branding. But we're working in Panopto, so we probably want to remove that branding. So notice that I have now opened the editor inside of Panopto. And we're looking at the VoiceThread branding here. You'll see that I have the beginning part of the slide. That probably should go. And if we play this all the way through to the end, we're also going to see that at the very end of this video, there is the VoiceThread logo in this. And in my opinion, this probably should be removed. So we can use the basic editing tools inside of Panopto to remove any of this um, branding that exists. And again, this isn't a video on how to necessarily um, edit video. There are other Panopto training videos that we've done for this, but I do want to show you that it is possible um, to remove that branding from VoiceThread on your videos. And then when we go ahead and we play these, and you can see I didn't quite get the playhead right here. When we play these, then the students will see um, the video component that we exported from VoiceThread, but they won't see the branding from the other tool that we created the original video in. So I just want to make you aware of how this all kind of works and plays out. If you were to make that branding, don't forget to change um, and apply your changes by pushing apply. This is going to need to re-render a new version of the recording where you will be redirected um, into the session once the new version or the applied changes have taken place. Again, I hope you find this helpful. Um, as always, we want you to be mindful of whether or not you should be reusing these recordings that are made in some of these other platforms. Um, I would reiterate the idea of being mindful of any type of FERPA issues that could be related to your videos. I would also ask you to think about um, the value that you're giving to your students from term to term. If you're recycling the same video from two, three, four terms ago or with different classes and it's obvious to students, your students might get wise and start to question what value you're bringing to them. So. Again, sometimes um, bringing these recordings over makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. This video is really just about showing you the process should you have some material that's created that you want to reuse. For future types of recordings um, that are going to be primarily lecture and asynchronous, we do encourage using the Panopto recorder for those types of lecture and slide presentations. If you have questions, like always, please feel free to reach out to us in the Faculty Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning.